I think when it comes to sample clearance, most people say, well, you're, you're probably not going to get caught. You probably aren't going to get caught. You're probably not going to get caught selling drugs. Probably. Russ came up on the north, like he was an Atlanta phenom, more of a suburban phenom, I would say. But everybody was paying attention to him. And I booked, so he went to high school with the one of the band members that I used to, or the band I used to manage. And I, I've told this story before, but I went to book him for a show. It was 150 cap. He was hyped because he wasn't doing a uh, 175 cap. Uh, he wasn't doing a, t- it was at vinyl. He wasn't doing a ton of shows. And um, he had just, I invited him to do this show. And then he got invited overseas for his first ever show overseas. And so we had just come back from the UK. So he saw the motion that we had. So he was like, yeah, I'm down to come do this show. And we just told him we'd give him a ticket split. But he said he was just going to post it. He didn't really want to like, have to deal with meeting me because we were selling physical tickets. He ended up leaving because he didn't get a sound check and didn't come back and perform. So like I'm saying all that to say that he's very much always been on his business. But I had like I had a seven piece band. I had a six piece, even Ink. Ink was on that show with her uh, band. Ink is the chick who wrote 16 Carriages and Texas Hold'em. So Ink's band was playing and Ink had, Ink had a five piece band. We had another seven piece band. The band I managed was a four piece band. So we're trying to get all these people checked before doors open. And I told him, I was like, you are the first priority as an as a solo artist but like I can't guarantee that you're gonna you may just have to get a line check right before you hop on stage and he was like not about it doors open he was like you know da 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 so I was like bet so he dips out I called him that like I that was on a Saturday I called him on a Monday I was like hey man like I want you to know I respect you. This wasn't a sign of disrespect. I just have to flow with like the venue was only giving me two hours to get everybody. And I was trying to get everybody in order. We backlined the whole, you know what I'm saying? I explained it to him. He was like, no, no, I respect it. I'm just saying stuff got to be right if I'm there. And I, so he's always been the same person. So I'm just, I'm saying that to reinforce that I think that he's probably for the most part, not that he's been perfect, had stuff in order. And I also feel like that's a control contributing factor to his success. People try to make it just like, oh, he got lucky because he was dropping on SoundCloud. He killed it. And then he blew up. And it's like, no, at every step of the journey, this man has required the, the, the level of uh, excellence to be at the bar that he believed he was at, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, let, let, I know we spent a lot of time on it. We, let's get into another, let's get into a tie. What you got, man? Oh, boy. Let's talk. Uh, you actually told me about this. I didn't even know this was going. This has to do with um, sample clearance. And it <laughs> a lot of people got involved. It's not just Drake. It's not just Lil Yachty. It's not just Kai. But Z got involved. And so this is just a dumpster fire. Let me... Um, I, I didn't even... Have you heard the song? I haven't even heard the song. So apparently... There's a beat that samples the comedian, Mr. Hotspot, who's been around for a while. And I guess the beat got used for a Drake and Lil Yachty song. So Drake and Lil Yachty Mr. record Hot- a song Mr. to Hot- a beat. I brought up Mr. Hotspot before because Mr. Hotspot is the, the cat that, that made a business out of smiling. He's, he's, one of, he's one of my examples. He's one of my examples when people tell me that you need money to... to 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 get momentum or to start building a community or whatever. Yeah, yeah and, and and they're as full of shit as a lot of the replies to, to this Z tweet. So so basically what happened, I guess I won't play the video because I don't know what the copyright um, backlash could potentially be, even though this actually is fair use because this is educational. But so what happened was, from what I can tell, Drake and Lil Yachty have a song to a beat with a with an uncleared sample from Mr. Hotspot. They can't clear the sample. It the, the reason they can't clear the sample, again, nothing to do with the producer. A lot of people put this on the producer. Nothing to do with the producer. It has to do with the content of the song. Mr. Hotspot, I thought was always Christian, but now I guess he's super Christian. It, I used to have a student that, that referred to those types of Christians as super saved. So now he's super saved. And so he wants 
a clean, sanitized version of the song. Otherwise, he won't clear the sample. He actually said it wasn't about his belief system, his personal belief system. He said it's because he works with kids and a ton of kids oh. are going to be listening to this song just by the nature of his audience and where he works. And so he said everybody who's creative should be able to make a song without cursing. So he said, let's just challenge ourselves. So that that was that. I just want to clarify that. But I. OK, because I read conflicting reports because Yachty in his interview with either Andrew Schultz or on Kai's live stream said it was because of his religious beliefs. And then I read an article where he said he doesn't want kids to get in trouble for singing a song that he was a part of. So I thought maybe it could have been both or maybe people are getting whatever. I, I If he's saying it about himself, then I, I believe him. Yeah, Mr. Hotspot did a live about it. And I watched like that clip from the live and he made a joke about he was like, kids just be singing everything. He was like, I'm not going to get no kids in trouble. That part was the joke. But he literally was like, okay. I'm blessed to work with kids. I'm big. I'm hugely influential in adolescents. And he said, how amazing would it be for me to come out with a song with Drake and Yachty that they can actually sing in front of their parents? That's a good point. Okay, so that's that's why he's holding out on the sample clearance. Where okay, this happens all the time. We know this happens. We know Tracy Chapman didn't want to clear a sample for Nicki Minaj. We know um, the estate of Donna Summer didn't want to clear a sample for Kanye. This happens all the time. However, the plot twist here, which I think is important for us to talk about after talking about ownership of catalog and intellectual property, is that Yachty apparently found a workaround so everyone's like oh we can we can uh create music with uncleared samples and still get it to the people without having to clear the samples here's how we do it we just leak it and since it's free we're free and clear so what ended up happening was they did leak it they leaked it on on um what is what is kai's show does he does the show have a name I think just the Kai Senate stream. I don't know. Okay. Well, I, I don't watch it because I'm 40. But uh, Brian tweeted, Same. if you use a sample, sorry, Z, Brian Z, I call them both. If you use a sample and it's not cleared for commercial release and then you subsequently leak it online and perform that record with the uncleared sample live. And to be clear, performance just means the song is being played for people it doesn't mean necessarily you're you're on the mic performing the song this is why people are fucking idiots and why do i even wake up in the morning every day the original rights holder can issue a cease and desist and or take legal action against you and the producer so all the all the replies from the morons at least latched on to that word perform because they don't understand like the fact that okay a performance royalty is not just when you perform a song. It's when the song is played on radio. It's when the song is streamed. Public performance and public broadcast are indistinguishable in that regard. And we're talking about intellectual property here. So no matter what, if the song is being played publicly, it is being performed. And that is copyright infringement, period. Now, the backlash was, and this is what I mean about people who are just, ooh, they're so confident all the time. This was one of the replies. Stop the fucking lies. Stop, Brian. What the fuck? You're fucking lying. What? Where do you come up with this energy? Basically, he's saying in the mixtape era, there were a lot of uncleared samples. And the only, the only way that you'll get in any sort of legal trouble is if money's being generated. Y'all spread so much false information. Blah, blah, blah. What are you talking about, man? We got to have Machiavelli, Machia, what is his name? Mac, what, we got to have him on here just so I can see if his voice sounds like this. His voice sounds like that. And then, of course, in those bios, y'all take Twitter too seriously serious. So, you know, there's always that way out. When you when you get someone uh, backed against the wall, then they're like, well, you, man, y'all take this shit too seriously. Like, yeah, there's That's nothing serious. So- funny that you that that's in his profile where he's like literally cursing and so upset over something yeah. that's like bro if it bothers you that much just get off the internet well but well, you're bothered by something that's 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 real like this is a, an objective fact i mean and there are a lot of um there there were a lot of unfortunate responses but it, it just the reason i want to talk about it not to clown um 
not to kind of individual people, but people who just love to contribute to the conversation with horrible information. So this, this guy, Mr. Sorry, not Mr. Big Deal Dealer. He said, if Mr. Hotspot registered it with the copyright office, then Yachty could be on the hook, blah, blah, blah. No, it's already cut. Co- what are you talking about? It has nothing to do with this. Um, that, that's not that's not even how that works. That's not how the law works. Just, again, copyright.gov, look at their FAQ, um, FAQ. <clears throat> so Valley is back, and he says that was played on the radio. That's why they got sued. Because truth hurts, Giselle Vivian is talking about um, what happened with Nicki Minaj. That was played on the radio. That's why she got sued. Oh, okay. So now um, now public broadcast only applies to radio. <laughs> like people are wilding out with, with this shit. Uh, I, I, there might have been – oh, yeah, th- <clears throat> this is the one that, that I should have just shown. Because this is this is really what summarizes the detractors. <clears throat> so Brian, it, God damn, see this. <clears throat> this is the universe telling me not to waste time on this. Um, Z is saying, if you leak a song, or you know release a song, no matter how you release it, whether it's monetized or not, and it's unclear the same way if someone drops a song to my beat and they haven't paid for it. Suddenly I have a ton of legal leverage because they they've committed copyright infringement so they can take legal action. Well, according to chilling out, no, they cannot. And it's in caps. So it's absolutely true. Specifically, if it's not for financial gain. Okay. Again, I don't, I don't know what planet people live on, but remember File sharing services; These those weren't for financial who make gain. Music on the internet, or in general, they make money on their music. I mean, this is these are not people; these are people with opinions who have never done anything music business wise. Because it doesn't. There's so many logical fallacies. You can find an example for each of them quickly. Yeah, yeah. Napster. I I think. I mean, I always I'm always looking for like you know what are we. Pulling out of these things, Payne. I think you need a separate show just to address like stupid comments, and you can give. Well, no. But what I'm pulling out of the stupid comments is, is, is that I, I know. I, well, I just want, in terms of how I look at this, is like artists oftentimes, you know, their heads get big and they think they're above law, they're above rules that other people play by, right? So even it's the same thing of like. You know, when an artist smokes marijuana and the venue doesn't allow marijuana and they're like, fuck, I'm just going to do it anyway because I'm that big. Do you know who I am? It's it's that. I brought all these fans here. This is why y'all making money tonight. Exactly. So we've all dealt with a lot of that. So I would just, you know, as artists are progressing, just be mindful that that's not how you extend the life of your career. You're going to lose a lot of money in these lawsuits, you might get into more fights than you would ordinarily get into. Like it just creates a lot of drama when you start you thinking you're bigger than the system and the rules. If you don't want to play within the system, then, you know, maybe don't do music or do something else. But, you know, I think that's just Yachty. Just, he doesn't even think that he needs to care about the law. Like he's he's Yachty, he's big, or it's Drake or whoever. It's like we'll deal with it later. Sometimes dealing with it later can shut your whole shit down. I mean, Yachty's doing his thing; he's, it's not going to shut him down completely. But for an independent no. art, but for an independent artist, you might like Trey Fuego. You might think you're bigger than something, and 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 then somebody comes and put the clamps on and stops your whole momentum, and then you're never heard of again. So you know, move with caution. Like like Trey Fuego. I mean, and, and granted, he Trey, was who's Trey Fuego again. He's the guy that got sued for about a million dollars for the uncleared sample by Sony. Um, and he kept ducking them. But, you know, I, and I, I still, to, to, to this day, no matter what, I still feel bad for him. I think it was a, a travesty of how they treated him, even though he ducked. He's a kid, whatever. But with regard to what I'm looking at as a takeaway here, intellectual property law, again, is the basis of the music business. If you know nothing else about the music business and know what copyright is, how it works, how you're automatically protected by it, 
how um, you can be affected by infringement, how you can be affected if you infringe on other people's copyrights. Copyright infringement involves pretty much any unauthorized use of copyrighted materials. doesn't matter if you're not making money off of it. Again, how many college kids got sued for file sharing on Napster? They weren't making a cent off of it. It was copyright infringement. How many people get in trouble for um, publicly broadcasting movies in unauthorized spaces? Why do, remember when you used to watch DVDs and you'd see that the FBI warning? It's not like those laws went away. They're still there. They apply to music. They apply to streaming. They apply to YouTube. Why do you think YouTube videos get taken down? People talking about, oh, they can't do anything if it's, if it's not for profit. Where do you live? Do you just, are you, are you cryogenically frozen and then unfrozen periodically just to write tweets about a world you've, you've never actually existed in as a human? I don't understand that, but that that's the summary there. Um, I think there's another possibility here with regard to Yachty leaking the track though. Um, now if I think there are two possibilities, one that Yachty spoke to Mr. Hotspot and said, okay, I'm just going to leak it on, um, on, on, on Kai's show. And he was like, okay, well that's fine, I guess. And so then they have some sort of, Agreement because it doesn't seem like there's been a backlash from Mr. Hotspot's team. Maybe it's brewing. That's a second possibility, yeah. and yeah. they just they're just that's building. Why, that's, a case. Why a, that's why he had a live. He sent them a new version. He said, "I don't want this out. We're not going to do this. Like, let's just release it properly." And then they were like, "Okay, if you want to." And so he sent them the new version, and and so I had sent a video, I think, and they he said, "We sent it off today, so we'll see what happens." And I think that's on him because it's like just like he told them he didn't want the dirty version. They may be like, "Well, we don't really," you know what I'm saying? And and the fact that Yachty snitched on himself. And basically told crazy, people, told crazy, people, told people that he was going to do it anyway. He now cannot claim ignorance. And I'm sure the financial repercussions are going to be 20 times as great. Well, may, tear, I don't know. This is so this is what I'm feeling is going to happen. Right. So obviously, if you're Mr. Hotspot having equity and he has all the leverage, having equity in a Drake and Lil Yachty song as we started talking um, about at the beginning of the show, means a lot. It's, it's, it's valuable. Mr. Hotspot might be doing this strategically. So there's so much buildup now. It's, it's damn near a rollout that you didn't have to pay for because of the sample clearance conflict, right? So he goes on, Kai, they, they leak it. And that was, leaking it was strategic because it puts pressure on everyone involved to make amends and come together to get the song done. Because now the fans are like, we want the song. We want the song. We want it. If the song had never leaked, no one would know that they wanted the song. And so it's kind of genius on Yachty's part, because it's now going to put pressure on Mr. Hotspot. Cause a bunch of people are going to be like, clear the sample, clear the sample. But it's also genius on Mr. Hotspot's part because he's going to publicly, now that all eyes are on him, he's going to say, all right, I'll clear the sample. It's so simple. Just clean this, clean the version up. And now people are going back to Yachty and Drake. And they're like, clean the sample, clean the, clean the song. So I don't think anyone's going to be suing anyone. That's this just my take. I think it, this is all great promotion. And eventually they're either going to get it handled or it's just going to fizzle out if it doesn't seem like a commercially viable play for, for Yachty's team. But regardless, hey, man, what's likely going to happen to people who – um, you know, like small artists who don't clear samples is they're, they're just going to get copyright claims or they're going to get their music taken down and, you know, they're not going to lose any money, but it's just a, a kind of, it's a dangerous cycle to get involved in, especially now, you know, we, t- in the last episode, we talked about the pro rata system for AI. I, I feel like, if that gets implemented, and, and to review, that's a system that uh, uh, checks all AI output for percentages of copyrighted songs that it trained on in order to send out and, and 
um, assign rights to to the people who own the copyright materials that the AI was trained on. Before this was happening, there was a Google technology that was catching the most minute, you know, seconds worth of milliseconds worth of sampled materials in existing music. And they were finding stuff in like Daft Punk records that had never been cleared. So all I'm saying is know, know what you're getting yourself into before you go on, on Twitter and talk about this is the fucking law. You know, sampling is you can do whatever you want. If if you actually want any semblance of a music career, a lot of people don't. And that's why they feel like they can go online and talk crazy to everybody. Because talking crazy to Z, calling him a liar, probably a bad move for a, a up-and-coming musician. Probably a really bad move. But hey, every, everyone's an adult here. To, to me, this goes back to my... To, I'm going to just keep using my analogy. Like You guys don't even understand the game you're playing you know, you, you start playing the game and then you figure out like, oh, you can land on this and go to directly to jail. Like, oh, I didn't know. It, it, that's why we have the Music Entrepreneur Club so that you can learn about these things before you start getting in this in this world of music. And to be honest with you, I don't really think I still don't think music is that is that difficult to understand. It's just people don't take the time to do it. It's definitely not. I'm not going to say it's the least, the, the easiest like compared to other industries, I'm sure there's other industries that are very that are that are a lot more simple. But there are a lot of industries that are way more complex too. Um, so this isn't this isn't rocket science. You just have to dedicate yourself to learning the business and like really learning the business, not not reading a few tweets and being like, okay, got it. Like you yeah. can't can't learn the business on on Twitter you know, in, you know, a certain amount of character for the, for the accounts that don't have the, the premium Twitter and access to these, these books that some people are writing on Twitter. You can't learn the business in these sound bites. But that's what I was saying on, on the post that I made on Sunday, that it's like the people who need it the most aren't tapped in. So it's like that dude is going to stay on Twitter and arguing with his bros in his group chat And while he's, like, playing, you know, Call of Duty, he's talking about, you won't believe Z said this. And then that's it. It's just like an echo chamber of stupidity. So it's like, that's why I feel like it's important for somebody like me or just in life to be coming up against people who are, like, friction so that you can constantly be learning. But a lot of people are ignorant because they enjoy it. They may not say that, but you enjoy ignorance because you don't enjoy correction and you don't enjoy learning. You pragmatically didn't say, hmm, this dude is an expert in the music industry who has been here for decades and built multiple successful companies. You probably haven't done enough research. That's fine. But instead of saying you're fucking lying, Z, if you disagree, you could have said, well, can you explain mixtapes then? I thought they did this, 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 and this. Yeah. You still may hold that belief, but approach it in an open manner so that you receive understanding instead of just more anger and frustration. Or as Z did, he ignored them. Like he's ignoring a ton of these ignorant people because for some reason, disagreeing causes anger. Y'all need therapy. It's Twitter. Why are you mad? Just ask a question. Maybe you thought it functioned that way and it doesn't. But like maybe your girlfriend yelled at you today. Could you yeah. please just go, 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 literally go touch grass and then come back and ask it as a question. You'll have more understanding. And there's so much power in understanding. So, I don't know. you know, and it's funny, too, because I get into, you know, I, I try to respond because it's, it's good for engagement. It's good for community building. And if people are asking questions that have to do with the music business, it's like, well, if I have an answer, I'll give it. But a lot of people think they're asking questions when they're not. Someone will leave a comment that's like, paying you a bitch. That's not how copyright law works, you bitch. And then I'll reply with like, you know, what the fuck are you talking about? That's exactly how it works. Stop posting this incorrect information. They're like, I was just asking a question. You didn't have to come at me like that. So a lot of it, I mean, that's, that's, you got to therapize that out of yourself. Um, but ultimately, look, the music business is governed by, by these laws. 
we have laws everywhere, right? We have jaywalking laws. People jaywalk all the time. People speed all the time. I think when it comes to sample clearance, most people say, well, you're, you're probably not going to get caught. You probably aren't going to get caught. You're probably not going to get caught selling drugs. Probably. I'm not telling you to do any of those things because when you get caught, which happens to many people, then what? Right? So, um, hey, know the laws, know how things work. If you choose to violate those laws, then at least you made that choice. But as long as you don't know, you can't really make a, a smart decision. Aaron, I, I only have a few more minutes. I don't, and I apologies we didn't get 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 to your topic. So you, we can. Just- no, we talked about it real quick at the top. It was the Joyner Lucas thing, or his oh. manager. Oh shit! I didn't know that was the top. That's kind of why I said I kind of. Yeah, I wanted to no, get no, more it, into it that. It worked perfectly with the Noah Lyles thing, so that that's why I just looped it in. But it, it's cool. And then we talked about. I think we covered enough cool stuff. I'm I'm cool. I'm gonna edit this out. Cool. So, all right. Well, here's here's something that's not illegal: free music distribution for three months. Maybe it should be illegal. It's not. Go to twoloss.com, use the code at odds, A-T-O-D-D-S, for three free months of premium music distribution. Get your whole catalog up there. You can get a lot of music in three months. Schedule it in advance so it's not all dropping at once because that's not smart. Um, I don't think it is. Uh, but, but use it. Use it. It's a resource, just like the information we're giving. Use, use the resources available to you. Um, and then when it comes to the music business and these topics that may be confusing, like sample clearance, like copyright laws, all of that. You don't have to spend money to learn this stuff. You can watch the podcast. You can go to copyright.gov and read the FAQ. You can go to the library and get the Donald Passman book. Get the library card. You don't have to pay for this stuff. I I, I don't understand why so many artists in the music business are constantly harping on the so-called ivory tower because we're gatekeeping information. You've never been to a library. You've never been to copyright.com. This stuff is free. I swear to you. And it's not hard. Once you learn about it, if you have the desire to just pick up these free resources and dive in, you'll be fine. I promise you. It, it, and then you go out and experience it and apply. It's not that hard. I promise. Very somber response from the, from the choir. All right. We appreciate you tuning in. Catch you next time. Peace. Peace.